Hello friends, this video on Organic Chemistry Basic Part 18 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let's start with isomerism. So what is isomerism? So here we have two or more compounds. They have same molecular formula, but they have different properties. Maybe chemical and physical, but they have different molecular, same molecular formula, but different properties. Such compounds are called isomers. For example, if you see these three, they have all benzene ring with two bromine attached, but their names are different and their properties are also different. A very similar example you can give in real life is a person at home and the same person in office behaves differently. When his home, he is pretty cool. When he is in office, he will wear a different dress and he will be having a different tone to talk. Maybe when he's in his form, he'll talk his, in his local language. When he's in office, he'll talk in English. So there, there are some difference actually, you know, uh, when a person is in home and when a person is in office. Similarly here, you have compound which has same molecular form. Like you see the constituents of the, the person is same, right? The same person, the same molecular formula, but the behavior is different. The properties is different. So here also if you see this uh, 3, 1, 3, all these have same molecular formula but they have different properties and these are called isomers. There are various types of isomers, structural isomers, in structural isomers we have chain isomerism, position isomerism, functional group isomerism, metamerism, tautomerism, ring chain isomerism. In stereoisomerism we have Geometric isomerism, optical isomerism. So we'll discuss all these. First, let's start with structural isomerism. So what is structural isomerism? Compounds they have same molecular formula but different structures. But they have different structure. That means the manner in which they are linked, and they are called structural isomers. For example, if you see same length of gold chain, this is linked in this way. It is a bracelet kind of thing, a necklace. And this is an open chain, right? So you see in both the cases, the structure is different, but they have same mass of gold actually, if you see, right? They have same mass of gold and same pattern of the small gold rings actually. The number of small gold rings and the size are almost same, but the way the structure is different. This is closed and this is open, correct? So similar kind of thing is called structural isomerism in the chemistrical world where you have same molecular formula, but different structures. For example, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, this is pentane. Pentane, we can have n-pentane, we can have isopentane, we can have neopentane. All these will have same molecular formula, that is C5S12, right? All will have C5S12 as a molecular formula, but each of these will be different. Correct? If you want more examples, these three compounds, right? So they also have same structural formula and same molecular formula, but if you see the structural formula is different, they have different structures. Correct? If you see this propane one all or propane two all, the molecular formula is same. The number of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen atom is same in both, but the structural formula is different. In this case, the OH group is attached to the last carbon here to the middle carbon, right? So propane one all, propane two all. So this is also an example of structural isomerism. Here also if you see propenal and propenal, so here the functional group is different but if you see the number of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen is same. So if here it has 3 carbon, 6 hydrogen and 1 oxygen. Here it has 3 carbon, 6 hydrogen and 1 oxygen. So if you see in both the cases the molecular formula is same, the number of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen is same but they have different structures altogether. Structural isomerism has different types. Let's study some of them. The first is the chain isomerism. So here we say that when two and more compounds have similar molecular formula but different carbon skeleton, they are called chain isomerism. Please note the carbon skeleton is different. Example in this case, if you see all these, they have different, the same example which we have used in the past one where we have the chain, one is open chain, one is the closed chain. Similarly, if you see the pentane, isopentane, new pentane, they have all the same structural formula, but they have different 
carbon structure carbon structure and they are called chain isomers the next is called position isomer in this case they differ in the subsequent atom or functional group on carbon scale the position the position of the functional group or the substituent atom is different so for example if you see this is a, this is a necklace with the pendant the pendant is in the center here the pendant is in the right side here it is in the left side if you see in all three the amount of gold is same in fact uh, the pendant is same and the necklace is same but just the placement of pendant is different similar kind of thing in chemistry world is called position isomerism where we have different positions of alcohol or any of the functional group so here functional group is in the last position here the functional group is in the middle we can take one more example here if you see here the double bond is in the first carbon here the double bond is in the second carbon correct so this is one example of position isomerism let's take the functional group isomerism here if you see these compounds have same molecular formula but different functional group and they are called functional isomers. For example, in the real life you see gun, right? Security guard and thief, they both have gun, but they use gun for different purposes, right? So if you see in these two cases, they have same structure, they have same chemical formula, they say molecular formula actually, but the way this molecular formula is used is different. This is propanol, this is propanol. Both have different functional group altogether. So they have different functional group. They have different functional group altogether. The whole group itself is different, right? So if you see, this is nothing but a person with a gun is let's suppose a molecular formula. So one guy is using it as for security guard, the other guy is using for what do you call it? killing someone, let's suppose. He's a bad guy, he's a good guy. So the molecular formula is same, but the functional group is different. So this is propanum, this is propanol. So in both the cases, the molecular formula is same. In both cases, it is C3H6O. It also C3H6O. Correct? But the functional group itself is different. Correct? One more example can be this. Here, if you see, there are double bonds. Here, we have triple bond. But the number of carbon hydrogen is same in both this compound. The next is metamerism isomerism. So what is this? This arises due to different alkyl chain on either side of the functional group. For example, if you see, this is my gold and I have to secure it. If I put two security guards each on both sides, that means my gold is secured equally from both sides. If I put one security guard here and three there, that means my gold is not very secure here from left side, but very, very, very secure from right side. Correct. So this is one example, but in, in this case also if you see in both the scenarios, the amount of gold and the number of security guards are the same. Similarly here, in the alkyl chain, right, so sometimes what happens is, on the functional group there are different alkyl chain. Here if you see, there is only one carbon, here you have one, two, three carbon. Here you have two carbon each on both sides. So both are different actually, right, both will have different uh, chemical property because assuming this is the gold, so the way it is attacked by uh, the nucleophile or the electrophile, which we will discuss in the next few slides, is different. So both will have different chemical properties. So this is called metamerism isomers. Correct. The next type is tautomerism. This is a special type of isomerism. This doesn't exist for all, but for some, where you have two different type of isomers and they exist simultaneously in dynamic equilibrium. For example, they are a lot of people in one room and some are happy and some are sad. Sometimes one person becomes happy, sometimes other becomes sad. So you assume that happiness and sadness are two different isomers. And if you see a, a group of, uh, what do you call it? if you see a bunch of students in the class, some are happy and some are sad dynamically, right? Sometimes the student X becomes happy, student Y becomes sad, and sometimes other way around. Similar thing in, in the Chemical world is called tautomerism, isomerism, where you have two different compounds and both they both exist in dynamic equilibrium. And that's why you see this dynamic equilibrium symbol is there. This is the dynamic equilibrium symbol. Correct? So if you see these two compounds exist simultaneously. So if we have 
maybe 30% of this, 70% of this, or maybe 50%, 50%, you don't know. Depending on the condition, but both exist simultaneously in dynamic equilibrium. And that is called tautomerism isomerism. Then we have ring chain isomerism. Here one isomer possesses open structure while other possesses cyclic structure. For example, in this case, one has cyclic, one has open structure. And the example can be these two compounds. If you see, in both the case, the molecular formula is same, but one is open, the other is cyclic. So these kind of isomers are called ring chain isomers because one is chain, the other is ring. Let's talk about the stereo isomerism now. So these are generally three dimensional isomers actually, 3D. So because they have same molecular formula and they have same sequence of bond also. But when you see this in the three dimensional world, you'll see the difference. The three dimensional orientation is different. For example, in this case, right? So this is, let's suppose carbon, carbon, this is chlorine, this is chlorine. This is my hydrogen, hydrogen. Similarly here also. So if you see these two, these two, right? So both has same almost structural formula, but if you see the three-dimensional view, here the two chlorines are on the top or are together. Here one chlor these two chlorines are separate. So if you see the three-dimensional orientation, they are different. And these kind of isomers are called stereo isomers. Same thing. We have drawn two-dimensional figure. One more example can be these guys. So if you see these guys, the these these two, right? You see three-dimensional view of this. This is in this case uh, this H uh, OH is going inside this uh, screen and this OH is coming out of the screen. Here it is other way around. Here this OH is coming out of the screen and here this is going inside the screen. So they have different three-dimensional orientation. Correct. And as I told, there are uh, various types of stereo isomerism. The first is geometrical isomerism. So, as I've discussed in the past slide, this is generally when you have three different three dimension arrangement, and this is generally when there is restricted rotation. So, if you see, there's a double bond here, so it can't move, it can't rotate, right? So, in this case, this is the figure. There are two possible options. In one case, two chlorines are together. In other case, the two chlorines are apart. Correct? This kind of isomerism is called geometrical isomerism and is generally in three dimensional. And here we have restricted rotation. Correct? The other type of stereo isomerism is optical isomerism. And these kinds of isomerism are called, called, called optical isomerism because they can be differentiated only based on optical activity because some has a uh, tendency to uh, turn the polarized light on the left, some has tendency to turn the polarized light on the right. So based on the optical activity, this name is given. And this term chiral is used to describe opposite that is not super impossible, imp uh, super impossible on its mirror image. You have a human hand, you take a human hand and you take a mirror image of that, you see that you will not be able to superimpose that. Correct. Similarly, if you see, this is one um, compound I have, which has COH, R, NH2, amine group, and hydrogen. If you take a mirror image of this, you get this. Now, if you see, if you see, this is my mirror image of this, right? So this particular compound, this is my COH, this comes here, this is my NH2, this comes here, and this is my CH3. So let me draw a star. Now, if you see, this is a mirror image of this. Now, these two are non superimposable. You, you can't so superimpose these two components, right? Such compounds are called chiral compounds, right? And this optical activity is derived from the interaction of the chiral materials. These materials are chiral materials with a polarized light because some of them, for example, in this case, I have this two superimposable stuff. So the first guy will turn the polarized light on the left. See, you see? From straight, it, it, it tilted left, and the second guy, this guy, will turn to the towards right. Correct. And based on this activity uh, or you know uh, impact, we differentiate optical isomers. 
correct see this is generally with the chiral object and the chiral object is something which uh, where the mirror the, the object is not superimposable with the mirror image for example leaf is not a chiral object but human hand is a chiral object if you take a mirror image of human hand, it is not superimposable. Similarly, this particular combined, if you see, if you take the mirror image, it is not superimposable. And if you see, in both these uh, objects behave differently with the polarized light. One rotate towards left, the other rotates toward right. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.